Hi, welcome back to the channel. I'm pretty fucking tired. Yeah, I, I, I'm really tired. I don't know why, but I want to get this out before I absolutely forget anything, because I thought this would be a fantastic story to tell, just for, like, entertainment purposes, and I didn't exactly have anything else pre-recorded, so... This was my last resort, and it was an idea I came up with a little bit ago. But I'm going to be talking about how my day went yesterday. Because even though I'm recording this on at like 2.41 and like 24 hours ago, it was like 2.41 a.m. So like technically less than a day ago, but it was technically yesterday because I'm currently recording this at 2.41 a.m. on the 3rd. But I went to Cedar Point today. Cedar Point is a amusement park in Sandusky, Ohio. And oh boy, do I have a lot of shit to talk about. Did I have fun from time to time? Yes. So, uh, pretty much what happened is we got there late. Because my grandma, when we were going there, her brakes were fucked up in her vehicle, so it took a super long time for her boyfriend to repair the brakes, so we fucking left at like 12 a.m. No, 12 p.m. technically, because when it goes to the afternoon, it's p.m., my apologies. And and we arrived at around 2.30, so it was like a two-hour, 30-minute drive, right? But, like, due to the fact we got there late, it was packed. Absolutely fucking packed with people. There were so many people that even I was like, I hate this. Because you want to know something? I'm okay with some people. But there was some pretty fucking shitty people there. I'll get to that later. I'll get to that later. So I'm going to skip the boring bits talking about this. But, um, you know, due to the fact that I have Asperger's Syndrome, which is a part of the autism spectrum, um, we were going to ride rides, and I was like, wait, let's go get this. And my grandma was like, all right. So we went to guest services, received a little thing, that went to everybody, because technically the people that went was my grandma, uh, my little cousin Ethan, who has ADHD, and something else. I'm not sure. I think he has something else, anyway. I, I believe he has a disability, nonetheless. Uh, me, Asperger's Syndrome, and my friend Noah, who also has Asperger's Syndrome. So we got those papers, and what happens is we would go to the exit, and the people that were, like, operating the ride or saying, Oh, go, 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 go. And, like, telling people to exit through a certain way. Uh, what they would do is they would write down, um, like, the date. Or, not the date, but the time that you got on the ride. Because, according to the paper, every 90 minutes when you go to a ride and you give them this paper and they sign it, you can get on a ride guaranteed every 90 minutes. Right? So, like, I was able to ride three rides. I'm going to put a small little POV in my hands here, like I'm owning the palm of the world here. Palm of the world. Holy shit, I'm so tired, I don't even know what I'm talking about. It's like I'm holding a little video in my hand, okay? So here's the three rides that I rode. Um, when we got the papers, immediately me and my little cousin Ethan rode the gatekeeper. Um, later on, for the first time in my life, I was able to build up courage to ride the Magnum XL. The Magnum... I have a bit to talk about the Magnum. It was fun. And uh, at the end of the day, which, we'll, like I said, we're going to go in order. We're going to take our time. I'm just kind of talking about the rides that I rode. Uh, the last ride that I rode with my friend Noah, we uh, went on the Iron Dragon. So... Two of those rides were considered aggressive thrills. Now, if you don't know, because you've probably never been to Cedar Point, I'm pretty sure the majority of you watching this video have probably not been to Cedar Point, because as far as I know when it comes to my viewers, you don't live in Ohio. But if you've ever been to uh, Cedar Point, you know that there is levels for certain rides, and it kind of has like a little uh, one through five thing. One is like a very mild and everything like that. And then it kind of builds up. And level 5 is considered very aggressive. Uh, the gatekeeper was aggressive. There's nothing really to talk about the gatekeeper. It's just super smooth. Super fun to be on. And the wind feels great, you know. 
But, um, fuck. <laughs> I had a mask on earlier, and because of that mask, it almost fell off when I was on the ride, so I was like, because I was like, hold my hands up in the air for the fun of it, and it was like sliding down my chin. It, it was really funny, and even my little cousin was laughing, because, uh, we got off the ride, and when we go through the exit, uh, there's like a little gift shop dedicated to certain roller coasters. You can actually see the pictures that are taken on the roller coaster. And you could see me, like, doing this with my eyes, but you can't see anything else except for, like, the top of my lip here. Because the rest of my mask is falling off my face and I'm trying to hold on to it for dear life. But it is a very fun ride, it's very smooth, probably... Definitely in my top three when it comes to Cedar Point. The Gatekeeper is just so fucking fun, man. Uh, but then after we rode the Gatekeeper, we were my grandma was like, Alright, uh, what do you guys want to do next? And uh, everyone was pretty bored at that point. So I was like, you know, I kind of want to go get some yogurt. Which, by the way, it's not really yogurt. It's kind of like frozen soft serve in a yogurt shop. If that makes any sense whatsoever. It says yogurt on the fucking sign. And my grandma was like, all right, let me give you some money. I said, no, 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 I got like $30 on my card. I'm all right, I'm all right. So we went to this yogurt place that was actually near the gatekeeper. And um, Noah was like, eh, I don't really want anything. But my little cousin was like, oh, hell yeah, I'll take some, uh, I'll take some yogurt. So what happens is um, we pretty much pick out the ice cream flavor. There was, there was quite a few. There was a spiced apple pie. I think that's what it was. Uh, there was chocolate, vanilla, strawberry, you know, the three basic flavors that everybody fucking has had in their life. If you haven't had chocolate, strawberry, and vanilla, you're living under a rock, okay? You're, <laughs> you're living under a rock. And that's okay. I recommend you try it. They're pretty fucking good. But I, I believe there was also a birthday cake flavor, and I, I think a few others, but it said out of stock. So, uh, we couldn't get every single flavor. And, um, what happens is you grab a cup, you fill it with a certain amount, and then you go on to the toppings. And, um, I had two toppings. Uh, there was boba, or bubble tea. It wasn't like the boba, like the tapioca boba bowls. Sus. <laughs> no, no, all jokes aside. Um, it was like more of a bubbly, like, it has like a little candy feeling to it. But when you put it in your mouth and you squeeze it very lightly, it pops and has a like a flavorful, fluty, fluty, fruity liquid in it. So it's kind of just like a bubble tea kind of bubble, and it pops in your mouth. It's pretty fucking good, and it was really good on the froyo. And uh, I also got a tiny bit of nerds, and my little cousin was like, uh, "I'll try it with some bubbles, like the bubble tea bubbles, you know." So uh, the way that we pay for these is when we stock them up. Uh, we put them on this little tray, and it weighs how much everything is, and it decides the price. Uh, me and my little cousin didn't fill ours all the way, and it wasn't that heavy. But goddamn, that was the most expensive yogurt I've had in my fucking life. I'm not even kidding you. Imagine having two cups of pretty much ice cream. I'm gonna just call it soft serve ice cream, right? With some toppings. And it ends up being 24 fucking dollars. Now, I could see 5 through 12, you know, like maybe $6 per cup. I, I, I could see it being expensive for that. But this, $24? That was insane. But we will admit, me and my little cousin both really liked the Froyo. It was really good, you know? It was pretty... It was bussin'. I never want to say that on this channel again, unless it's ironically. <laughs> so then uh, we kind of walked back to my grandma, and they're like, Oh, hey, uh, alright, well, how much was it? And I told her the price, and she's like, Oh, hell no. That's exactly what everyone else was thinking. <laughs> she was like, Alright, what does everyone else want to do? So we kind of just sat there and thought about it for a moment, and then... Um, me and my little cousin were like, hey, let's ride the Windseeker. And if you don't know what the Windseeker is, I'm going to link a video to it in the description. But we couldn't ride it. And what the Windseeker is, is it's a big ride. Like a big swig. And it's like 
I think about 100 through 250 feet tall, somewhere in there. I, I don't know for sure. I don't know the measurements of how tall that fucking ride is. But you sit on a little seat. Uh, there's two seats next to each other, and it kind of spins around and goes up as time goes on. You get a great view of the area, and I find it a very relaxing ride to get on. And uh, Noah was like, oh, I hate that ride. I don't want to get on that. And I, I guess it's understandable. If you have a fear of heights, you're not going to want to get on something that's very slow-paced, about 200 feet in the fucking air. I understood how he felt. Because back when in, like, 2012, I was terrified of heights. I won't even lie to you. I, I was terrified of heights. But that's a story for another time. So we went to fucking um, use our little things there. Like the little uh, passes that we got. Not really passes, more of the, hey, uh, we're disabled. Well, we're not really disabled, but we got, we have disabilities and we we're going to have them like sign it so we can get on the ride. But we were like, no, the reason why is because the line for that, I've never seen such a long line for an amusement park ride that's as underrated as the Windseeker. That was a long ride. Or, line. Forgive me if I sound stupid. I'm tired as hell, okay? <laughs> I'm so tired. But, um... We couldn't get on that. The line was too long. And we felt like some people would get, be mad if we were just like, Hey, operator, let us on this ride before anyone else. Even the fast lane line was really long. And if you don't know what fast lane is, fast lane is like, hey... Uh, you buy this thing and you go through a certain area where you can get into rides faster. You know, just a. I'm sure there's multiple fast lanes for amusement parks around the world. I, I I'm quite sure. And then anyway, we were like, all right, uh, let's do something else. And my grandma was like, ooh, I have an idea. Let's go get food. And I was like, okay, where do we go? So um, near the one seeker, there was like this melt place. I don't know what it was called, but it was like an. Uh, indoor food place and there was a barbecue place by the Magnum XL and uh, at first we were like yeah, let's do the melt place and my grandma was like actually no let's not let's do the barbecue which is funny for my grandma I don't think she realizes it but she'll fucking be like alright you have two picks and then everyone picks one and she's like actually no let's not do that and everyone's like wait well we picked that though and she's like nah I don't care let's go to the other one <laughs> but it was worth it because uh, the food at the other place was really really good and uh, we had these little band things. I, I I actually have it up here. Hold on a moment. So, pretty much, uh, it's this thing here, right? This is a... Um, I think I had it upside down. I'm so sorry. It's a dining all-day pass. And I believe every 90 minutes, uh, you go up to a food place, and the food menu on the um, list of foods you can pick from... Uh, if there's like a little fork, plate, and knife symbol right next to it, that means you can pick it with the all-day dining pass. So I was like, oh, cool, dude. We're going to get some freaking barbecue. But we got some pretty basic barbecue. But we had a little bit more. So when we got there, uh, we got like two orders of chicken strips. Well, no. One order was chicken strips. One order was like um, a brisket kind of thing. I, I don't know. But it was really fucking tender. It was so good. It was so fucking good. You could cut it with a fork. You could cut a brisket with a fork. That's how tender that shit was. And it was amazing. It was so fucking good, dude. Honestly. But the chicken tenders were pretty fucking spot on. Pretty fucking good. Very crispy. Nice and juicy in the middle. It was really good. Uh, we also had uh, corn muffins with them, which were also really good. Uh, we had some potato wedges and some really good mac and cheese. And uh, I, <laughs> I kind of felt bad because the lady in the kitchen was running all over the place because of how many people were waiting to get food in there. And that place was packed. Like I said, we arrived at 2.30, meaning by the time we were pretty much getting food, it was so fucking packed, dude. It was so packed. But we did get our food, and we sat outside, and we're like, all right, um, let's eat. So me and Noah had the share, which was completely fine. There was enough food for, like, two to three people. And we both 
pretty much dug in. I had like a cup of Sprite. Um, I think Noah didn't have anything to drink. I think he did get water though, but I don't remember for sure. And uh, my little cousin Ethan had like uh, cherry Coke, eh, cherry Coke. Um, and everyone pretty much eat all the food that we got. We pretty much all ate and had a good time. But luckily, the barbecue place that we ate was right next to the ride that I wanted to conquer. And I have a big reason for wanting to ride this ride. The Magnum was right across from this place. Right? So I was like, I want to ride the Magnum. And my grandma was like, don't feel like you have to because of your dad. And uh, the reason why is because I wanted to dedicate that. I'm not as scared as I used to be. And I wanted to ride the Magnum in dedication to my dad. Not just because of my dad, though. Yes, my dad is a big reason that I wanted to ride it. I wanted to, like... I, I don't know if there's an afterlife. But if there is and my dad's looking down on me, I hope I made him proud. By, for once, pulling my big boy pants up and getting on a ride that, for the longest time... I was too much of a pussy to ride. But I had to wait a few. Because while we were eating... The... While we were eating... I'm sorry, like I said, I'm gonna fuck up my words a lot. I'm tired, okay? I'm tired. While we were eating... Uh, the Magnum actually broke down. Like, you could see the... The carts. The little, um... Uh, things that go up the tracks. I think they're carts. I'm just gonna call them carts. Or whatever. Uh, they were like stuck on the track on a certain part. So I had to go a few times to make sure it was running. And we waited. My grandma's like, if it doesn't work for a little bit, we'll just try to come back later tonight. Luckily, right as we were about to leave, uh, everything started working. I was like, alright, Ethan, let's go. And Noah, of course, sat it out because Noah was... Noah hasn't gone to amusement parks since like 2014, so... I, I didn't really care if he didn't ride anything. I just wanted to have fun. I don't care if we fucked around, joked around, did whatever. As long as there was, like, happiness within the group, I was okay with it. So me and Ethan grabbed our little passes. I'm going to call the little uh, disabled chart things, like the people with disabilities being able to get ri on the rides. Uh, we were able to go get on that. So we went to the back, waited, got on, and boy, this was terrifying. So, I, I had a pocket with a beanie hat. By the way, I took my beanie off. That's how tired I am. I'm not wearing a beanie. Look, guys, I'm not wearing a beanie in a YouTube video. Isn't that fucking absurd? <laughs> oh, my God. But, no. um, I had the stuff my beanie in my pocket. I had my credit card in my pocket. I was scared everything was going to fall out. And there was a lot that happened for this one ride. So we were going up the hill, and uh, here's the thing. Um, the rides that I'm normally comfortable with have the rides that go over your shoulders like this, and you hold on like this. The Magnum had it where it went into your lap, right? And I don't like rides like that too much, because I, I feel like I can't get a grip on them as much, and I don't like putting my hands in the air, and I've also noticed that you get a little bit more air time. Which, by the way, airtime is fun. It's just for the longest time, it was something that terrified me beyond disbelief. But I said, I don't care. I want to get on it anyway. So me and my little cousin sat next to each other and were like, all right, let's do this. My little cousin was like, oh, it can't be that bad. It can't be that bad. It's not that bad. I remember riding this a while ago. So he was pretty much like bragging to me that it was a good ride. And I was like, all right, uh, we'll find out if I like it personally. So we got on, uh, started going up the hill, and um, this was a hell of a time. <laughs> this was a hell of a time. Right as we went down, normally when I ride roller coasters, even I've rode other ones that go into your lap, I normally go, wee, or I'm pretty silent and just enjoyed the time. I was yelling. My throat hurt afterwards. I was in such a state of terror. I was, like, yelling. And I was terrified. And the worst thing about it is it's bumpy. It's like very bumpy, but not in a way that's like, oh, this is very unstable, very uncomfortable. In a way that's like, this is kind of a nostalgic older ride. Which, keep in mind, for those of you that don't know, the Magnum XL was the 
first ever roller coaster. If I'm correct, correct me if I'm wrong, but from what I've heard, this is the first ever roller coaster that was ever built over 200 feet tall. Now, I don't know about worldwide, but in the United States, I believe this is true. But I haven't seen anything from any other country about building a roller coaster bigger than 200 feet back when the Magnum XL first was, you know, released to the public to ride on. And, um, you know, so it was like, it was bumpy, but it was fun. And uh, the first hill, I had airtime and my butt like slightly lifted out of the air and I felt like I was floating. But it was like the wind was hitting me. I was like, oh, it was like fucking crazy. It was absolutely insane. But that wasn't the really insane part. Yeah, the whole yelling thing, the whole like, I'm terrified roller coaster. Ah, you know, everybody expects that for your first time riding a ride you're not used to. You've never rode before. That's not the part that I'm talking about here now. Well, right when we got near the end, we went through like a tunnel. And something flew across me and my little cousin's face, and we didn't know what. My little cousin laughed and said, Someone lost their phone! A phone nearly hit us both in the face. Because it fell out of someone's pocket. And then after we the ride stopped, we heard ladies talking, Oh, where's my phone? It turns out two people lost their phone on that ride. Because they were stupid enough to bring the phone with them. Do I feel bad? Yes. Because maybe they didn't have anyone else to hold it, you know? If that's the case, I understand. You had to do your best to hold your phone because no one else could really hold it for you and you didn't want it getting stolen. I understand. But you should have secured it a little bit better because then it nearly hit me and my little cousin in the face. So we nearly got pretty much physically assaulted by a cell phone <laughs> on, a, on an amusement park ride, nonetheless. So, you know, that's fun. And then, um, after we were done with the Magnum, it started raining. So this is where the day started to go downhill a little bit. Um, I was like, alright, uh, me and Noah are gonna split up and go do some shit. And my grandma was like, alright, um, I'm gonna put some money in your card. She put, like, an additional $40. So me and Noah kind of just went to the arcade. When we went to the arcade the first time, a little bit earlier, they had them a machine. And in that machine was Among Us plushies that were like this big. I tried to win one, but the machine was rigged. It literally grabbed onto the yellow one, but then like slid off, barely gripping on it. That was so fucking rigged. I was like, that's a fucking waste, man. <laughs> Noah looked at me and said, get fucked, idiot. Which he, he's joking. He's joking, clearly. Because that's how we joke. We, 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 we joke in some strange ways. But we kind of just went and played some other um, games in the arcade. And a lot of shit felt pretty fucking rigged. I tried a few other things and it just didn't work. There was another one where you could win like these beautifully designed balls. That were kind of like bouncy balls in a way. Not like big ones. Or not really small ones. My apologies. But like the small little, you know, generic bouncy ball that you can bounce that you get from like a gumball dispenser. Not really gumball, but, like, the machine that can contain gumballs. Uh, you know, it's not like that small little bouncy ball. These were like these, and they were, like, made out of rubber. And when I used the little card, because you had to pay for a card that had points or credits on it, and you used the credits in the machine in order to play a game. So, um, hold on. My throat was getting a little bit dry there from all this fucking talking. Um, the ball machine did absolutely nothing. And I swiped three times and it stole 12 credits from me and did nothing. So yeah, the arcade was a pretty bad experience. Not only that, it was raining like crazy outside. So, um... Me and Noah were like, alright, we're done with the arcade. Let's go get a pretzel from Auntie Anne's. And uh, we were walking back, and my grandma called and uh, said, alright, let's meet up. And I was like, alright. So we were walking along the way, and there was a uh, person in a little Dippin' Dots dispenser. Not dispenser, but like a vendor where they were selling Dippin' Dots. And if you don't know what Dippin' Dots are, they're like an amazing 
little shaved ice kind of ice cream type of thing. I, I don't know what Dippin' Dots are, actually. I think it's just ice cream, but it's, like, in the shape of tiny balls, and they're, like, all put together. It's pretty much ice cream. It's really good. And I got, like, a large thing of it for, like, $8. It was really fucking good. <laughs> and right when I got it, my grandma called again and said, He just ate, like, a few hours. No, he just ate not that long ago. Even though it was, like, over an hour ago. But, hey, I'm fat. Deal with it. <laughs> Anyway, uh, we kind of just started walking along, and then we started getting into haunted house territory. Noah was terrified of haunted houses because, you know, he can't do scary shit well. But me and Ethan, um, we were going to be pretty cool with it. And there was actually some really funny shit that happened. Oh, no, we got to go back a little bit before that. I'm going too far. Uh, Before we entered the haunted house area. Uh, we decided to go get some more food. I know, more food. It's absolutely insane how much food I've been consuming. Talking about consuming all this fucking food. It's crazy. But, um, there was this place called something Fryer? I, I don't remember. But they had the thing on the little wrist thing about battered cheese on a stick. And I got that. And instead of getting one with, like, fries, you get two full ones. I went to eat it, and uh, me and Noah started making jokes. It was a heart attack on a stick. Look at this thing. That was a heart attack on a fucking stick. It was literally batter with really thick amounts of cheese in the middle. That is diabetes-inducing, okay? That is insane. I'm surprised I didn't croak from eating that alone. (laughs) But luckily, I had a large Sprite with me to wash it down. So then we went to the haunted house stuff. Also, I I forgot to mention, I scared a little kid by burping. So, you know, that's a plus. I love scaring children by belching. No, we went to the haunted house stuff, and uh, Noah was hesitant. He didn't like entering it. And it wasn't like a haunted house. Like the whole thing was a haunted house. It was called Haunt. And you walk through it and it's like a whole bunch of spooky stuff that can lead to haunted houses. And um, Noah doesn't like scary stuff. So he kind of stayed back for a few and then eventually joined us. And uh, me and my little cousin kind of skipped a lot of the haunted houses because the lines were unusually long from what we remember. Because a while ago we've done haunted houses at Cedar Point. Like, not together, but separately. And the lines were a lot more bearable. They went a lot quicker. But the only line that was pretty easy to get through was the line for the ride known as the Slaughterhouse. Now, there was quite a long wait for the Slaughterhouse haunted house. But the reason for it was actually quite unfortunate. So, we were waiting, and at first, this guy in front of us was like, Hey, uh, somebody broke a mirror in there, being scared. So we thought, oh, they just broke glass, so they're cleaning it up. So that's why it's taking them so long. Turns out, we left the haunted house. And my grandma said that one of the employees touched a kid. Not sexually, but, like, spooked the kid and put his hands on him. Which made the parents freak out, and security was everywhere. And, um... If you don't know, if you work at, like, haunted houses, you can't touch the people going through haunted houses. It's a rule. You literally can't. Especially a kid, okay? But, um, the haunted house was overall okay. We had some really disrespectful women behind us, and, uh, I was joking with them. She was like, oh my god, hurry up and move, even though there was, like, dudes in front of us that were, like, really slow, but we weren't rushing them. Now the girl, I'm trying. And uh, instead of her joking around or laughing, she's like, boy, shut the fuck up. Like, come on, I'm trying to joke and make you laugh for this slow experience. You think I'm trying to hold you back, bitch? Nah, I don't think so. Shut the fuck up, you know? Eventually we got through it and they pushed their way. They were very disrespectful and it kind of ruined the slaughterhouse experience for me. I was, I was pretty sad. But, um, there was some funny stuff that happened when we were going through Haunt. And what me and my little cousin would do is, we would constantly yell from time to time, Can I get a Hoya? And for a little bit, we weren't getting anything. Like, we weren't getting people responding. 
and then we got to a part of the park, and everybody was shouting it to the point where a girl in front of us turned around and yelled, Shut the fuck up! <laughs> it was really fucking funny. Okay. What are you looking at? Hold on. What the fuck is this? What is this? Do y'all see this thing? Hi. It's baby. It's a baby. Little hydroplane ear baby. Right, I'm gonna hold you while I continue talking about my day. I hope you don't mind, little little fluffy cat. But um, <laughs> you good? I think she's good. Uh, eventually, um, more shit happened. Uh, a few arguments broke out after some stuff that happened. But then, uh, after a lot of negative stuff happened, which we're not going to talk about that because, you know, we don't, we don't, I don't want to talk about that. I don't want to remember that shit. Eventually, me and my friend Noah talked and Noah was like, alright, I actually want to do something. I want to be a better friend. Instead of, like, being on my phone and doing all this and that while at amusement park, let's go ride something. So we went and we rode the Iron Dragon, which was just a fun experience. The ride was really smooth. It was actually quite fast compared to what I remember. I thought it was a slower ride. But no, it was it was a bit quicker than I thought, and it was a lot of fun. I, I enjoyed it. And then uh, we kind of just left. Yeah. So that was my day yesterday. We didn't get home until, like, 2 in the morning. We left at, like, 12-something. No, like, 11.40 to 50-something. And I'm tired. I've been recording for 30 minutes. Talking about this story. Please appreciate this video and drop a like for my suffering because I want to go to bed. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. I don't beg for likes, okay? Like the video if you want to. That's what I always say. If you enjoy, like the video. If you want to, subscribe. That's not up to me. That's up to y'all. Anyway, thanks for watching. I will see you all in the next video. And I'm going the fuck to bed.